Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to this 5-Minute Fitness Tips episode. Uh, as I've mentioned in previous episodes, uh, I will be pulling back from the podcast in the upcoming month or so as I start preparing to build out phase 2 of my business, uh, putting together my website, uh, training programs, etc, etc. Um, so... In this episode, I've taken uh, about a six and a half minute clip from an upcoming interview that will drop on Monday with my man, Danny Lennon of Sigma Nutrition, where we discuss uh, working with athletes and the effect of long-term caloric deficits over extended periods of time and the effect that has on the body and the physiological processes that go on behind the scenes. Let's get this episode underway. When we look at fighters, for the most part, fighters or athletes in general look at food as fuel. You know, if they're at the elite level, whereas the average person looks at food for joy, they eat for the hedonistic value, right? Right. Um, Whereas athletes are uh, looking at, right, what is this giving me? How is this fueling me? Um, You know, so I think it's a great point that we do need to give athletes time to be a little bit flexible and start you know gradually increasing their calories over time so they they go through that metabolic adaptation which is something we'll discuss in a moment but um you know they they are eating a good amount of food to support their training their recovery um they're not being super strict and you know it gives that like you said gives them that psychological freedom so that when they do sign a contract cool they've got a lot of they've got a lot of tools that they they've got access to now Whereas if they're dieting all year round and they're training three times a day all year round, they're hammering themselves with every single session. Once they sign a contract that one, they're going to be fucking tired because most fighters never do a deload regards to nutrition or training, mm-hmm. right? So um, when we give them that flexibility and, and these conversations where we educate them on this type of stuff, they go, oh, cool, I can, I can relax a little bit. I'm not going to blow myself out, but I can kind of um, reduce my stress a little bit around my eating and my training and things like that. Focus on the other areas, you know, the rehabilitation and, um, gradually increasing your calories and getting your body fat percentage up a little bit and supporting that performance and recovery so that, you know, essentially when you, when you sign that contract, you're now at the start line in a fucking good place to be able to now put the, put the pedal to the floor. Yeah. And I think what we know from weight class based sports is it is a huge problem is this, concept of low energy availability where essentially there is not enough calories coming in to support both the training workload and certain essential processes within the body so what the body does and how it adapts it has to essentially save energy and turn down energy expenditure from some essential processes so with female athletes we see this super commonly where they experience loss of their menstrual cycle so amenorrhea which is basically a way of the body to conserve energy by saying right now i don't need this reproductive function and i'm not getting enough calories in so i'm just going to turn this off the same thing happens with immune system function same thing happens with digestive function uh bone health and so you see this um, classification of what's now termed relative energy deficiency in sport is where we have a chronic low energy uh, d- um, availability state you have this manifesting in various different body systems like i said whether that's reproductive bone health so that means it's increasing risk of like stress fractures or even long-term complications like osteopenia um it's impacting immune system function so now you have athletes more susceptible to illnesses and if you're ill you're either not able to train properly or you're in missing training sessions they stack up on, enough over multiple years you're missing time that you could be getting better at your your craft so there's all these components of of low energy availability and what's important to realize is sure we may need to dip into that state during the tail end of times where we're getting super lean or an athlete's cutting weight that's almost unavoidable but we don't want that happening chronically over the long term so when we don't have a fight coming up making sure we have appropriate energy to fuel all those training sessions and getting plenty of calories coming in is the way to prevent a lot of the, those downsides so that the athlete doesn't run into those those very real problems Mm. that's a great point because when someone is in a you know a a caloric deficit for extended periods of time um the body essentially thinks it's under threat right it's fighting for survival so like you said it's going to start you know shutting down some of those 11 systems of the body or some of those systems are not going to be getting the required nutrients for optimal function 
And particularly if you're training two to three times a day, you're literally robbing from Peter to pay Paul. You know, you're taking that energy away from the body's um, physiological processes to fuel your training session, right? So, you know, that's why I wanted to bring up this conversation, the difference between health and performance, because those things really, they kind of go in hand, but they don't as well. So what I mean by that is we want someone to be healthy the majority of the time so that when it is time to, you know, put the pedal to the floor, now we can start training for performance. Now we can start dialing everything in and we can go through that eight to 12 week um, period of high stress um, where we're cutting weight, where, um, you know, building our strength, speed, power, energy systems, um, et cetera. We're sharpening our schools, uh, skills, we're sharpening our acts uh, and we're reducing our weight as we get closer and closer to the fight, you know, but then on the other side, you know, there's the, most people don't have that periodized plan. It's just like, all right, cool. I signed a contract. I don't know how many calories I, I'm eating. I don't know um, how many macronutrients I'm having. I'm already training two, three times a day. You know, where do I go from here? You know, mm. they've got to start pulling from somewhere, you know, and that's when you get into a massive calorie deficit and then you start creating metabolic adaptation. And particularly on the other side of a fight or, you know, a, a weight class athlete um, competing in an event, then on the other side, people haven't been taught how to go through a reverse diet or have essentially a plan to come out of that. They've been restricting for long periods of time. We need to teach them how to come out of the other side. You know, cool, go and enjoy yourself, okay, but have it for you know a couple of days. Just understand your, your um, digestive system's probably going to be a little bit stressed out and, you know, you, you're going to be super sensitive to certain things that come into your body like alcohol and maybe if you smash a heap of carbs and things like that, you know, it might cause some indigestion and bloating and things like that. You know, have that, understand that. Have a couple of days to enjoy yourself, but also think like we've got to plan the other side of it where we start going through a little bit of a, a reverse diet and then we start changing our training as well where we, you know, we've put our body under a shitload of stress for the last eight weeks, 12 weeks or whatever. Let's have a plan nutritionally and um, training wise to come out the other side so we can start rebuilding those health markers and get ourselves back to a good position. Full episode with Danny Lennon of Sigma Nutrition will be live on Monday. Peace.